when we were running our photography business, one of the things we learned very quickly was that editing can take a really long time, yet it's also really important. So one of the industry rules that we discovered fairly quickly that was very helpful was that you want to take no more than five minutes on average a photo. And that's going to require some thinking about your system, creating a system so that you still have a good photo in the end, a good result, but it can happen really quickly. And even for everyday photographers, just your family photos, things like that, editing can be like, it can suck your soul. It, it, it gets, it can take forever and it can get old really quick. Well, like if you think about it, if you're taking five minutes for a photo, you can only do 12 photos in an hour. So you multiply that for a wedding of like 200 photos. That's a lot. Or 300, 300 was our average, right? So you really want to get that at any time down. Yeah. So it's really important to get that down and yet still have a good product in the end, be able to edit really fast um, know what's important and knowing what's not. That's part of the trick. And then creating a system so that you can just go in, edit really fast and be done and say, okay, that's good enough. Yeah, so we created a system. And so we're just going to lay out our system for you. These are the steps we take when editing our photos. And before we get into the process, one thing to note is that when we're dealing with lots of photos, like on a photo shoot or a we've gone on a, a photo day somewhere, or we're shooting a wedding is that when we have lots of photos, we don't typically do one photo at a time. We'll do each stage to all the photos and then go back to the beginning and then do the next stage to all the photos and just do one stage at a time to all of them. And then we find that to be just much more efficient. All right, so some people I think start with the exposure and things like that. I like to start with crop and straighten because I wanna know, is the picture gonna work first, right? So I always go through and on all the photos that I'm editing, we'll like pick the ones we like and then we'll go and edit each stage on each photo one at a time, kind of really quick. And the first thing I'm checking is if I crop in, is it going to be right? Is there enough headroom? Is it is it the way I want it? And I'll often do a crop almost on every picture, just adjust the composition slightly. Usually you can improve on it just 10%, doesn't take any time, and then straightening it while I'm at it. So that's the first pass, and I'll go through to do that on all the photos. Yeah, and so once you get your crop and straighten, and you really know what photos are going to work that you want to keep, then you want to go through and you want to do your exposure. And so uh, with your exposure, you can have, in a lot of editing softwares, uh, there's a setting that is um, that will will show like a red color if your your highlights are getting uh, peaked and it will if they're getting overexposed like if yeah. you're losing information yeah. and then and then there's uh blue if your blacks are getting crushed so what i like to do is i like to first turn my image black and white so that the color isn't throwing off your eye and your exposure a really quick way to just turn your photos black and white that we always do is just desaturate it to zero um and then you can bring back the and just reset it yeah just reset it when you're done right and then I would take and I would just adjust my black so that they're just above the so that I'm not really getting too much blue. But you're still getting a little bit yeah. like, I mean, this is a matter of taste where yeah. you want your blacks. Right. But we like to do it where there's a little bit of black so that we know the black things are black, black yeah. but it's not too much. Right. And then you adjust your highlights and, and put it so it's just below where it gets peaked so that you know you're not losing inf any information. Once you have those, um, your your highlights and your shadows set, then I like to go in and do an S-curve. Um, S-curves are just beautiful in mm -hmm. exposure. And so it's really working with your mid-tones. And so you'll do an S-curve and just bring up those mid-highlights a little bit, bring out those mid-shadows um, a little bit. And just add a little more contrast. Because your image is black and white, um, this is going to help your eye to see a little bit more what your whites and blacks are doing. Um, and then as soon as you have your exposure set how you want it to, then you put it back into its full color. Then you go and adjust your white balance and get a color correction. Make sure the colors in the image are looking good. Right. Do you have any thoughts? Any... Well, so I was going to say, most of the time with the color is your most... Color is usually Jill's job, mm -hmm. especially the, the setting. I'm getting a lot better at it. I'm getting a lot better okay. at it, but okay. but Jill's just faster at it. So if we're doing a wedding or something, Jill's doing that. Wow. If you have a lot of stuff with really wonky colors, it, it can take quite a bit to just... And weddings have wonky colors. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody has good lights. <laughs> but um, for the most part, when you're dealing with your white balance, most of the time you're just working on... Um, a blue and orange scale, a Calvin scale. And so a lot of times you can adjust adjust your slider that is for your blue or your orange 
and uh, put it to where it needs to be. We kind of like a little bit on the warm side for our images. And so we tend to lean towards that way. If you are doing something in like fluorescence, um, a lot of indoor weddings have really wonky colors. And then you start getting some of your magenta greens. And so then you're going to want to play around with your magenta greens a little bit more. Um, and, and different cameras will tend towards different things. I mean, sometimes you also have environmental, like trees will yes. put a green cast from their leaves sometimes. Sometimes you've got bounce off a building that's colorful or things like that are throwing things. But even cameras like Nikon tends to be a little bit more on the green side. So we tend to have to go a little bit more towards the magenta. Mm -hmm. And Canon will tend to be a little bit too red in the skin tones. And so you'll have to pull that back into the green a little bit yeah. um, different cameras are going to behave a little differently and so you you are you are going to often want to just tweak that a little bit especially blonde hair we find blonde hair um, can be quite difficult underneath it, different it can pick up the color. just because it picks up different colors in the environment a lot better and so it can be a little bit tricky and so if you're having trouble a lot better a lot worse depending which right? <laughs> a lot worse. that's right so depending whether you're having trouble with that you that might be in that green magenta um uh, color correction mm -hmm. uh, and white balance. So your goal with this is just to really um, have the whites look white, have the skin tone look where you want it to be. Yeah, actually, that's that's worth clarifying, right? At this point, we're not adding any style, stylistic anything. We're trying to get it looking natural first mm -hmm. so that it looks good. And the image to image, we are seeing that it's fairly consistent. It mm -hmm. feels uniform image to image mm -hmm. and that's what we're going for and then once you kind of have your exposure and your color balance done what i really like to do is that uh, images look different when they're in like smaller thumbnails than when they're in the large full screen and so um, sometimes your eye can kind of trick you as you're playing with it and so what you do is you just back up into the gallery so you can see all your photos together as small thumbnails and then you can kind of tell and see if it's consistent or not and sometimes you're like oh this photo's a little more green go into that adjust it quick go back in and say okay do these all match do they mm -hmm. look like to my eyes anyone standing out is anyone darker is anyone too green is anyone too you know whatever and then you just go in and tweak those photos individually to make sure your gallery is consistent so that's like your basic your basic editing. Now our image looks natural. They all look uniform. And the final thing that we do to every picture that we use uh, or that we edit is we add a vignette um, or some sort of some sort of vignette on it. And um, I don't know, it just always makes things look better. It helps draw your eye right to the center of the image, which is usually where you want it to be. I mean, you can use a circle mask um, on some software to kind of put it off to the side if you've done an interesting composition but it helps draw your eye it just it really does help pop an image when you add a vignette we find we really really like that so that's mm -hmm. standard on all the images it brings the focus right? yeah. and then the yeah. step after that is um where we start to get into optional mm -hmm. if an image needs it and where you want to spend a little more time on it because it's worth it um is things like uh, skin retouching so uh, taking out some blemishes, um, acne if somebody had on a bad day. Um, Skin smoothing. Yeah, or, or something in the background. Sometimes you get those magic brushes that are great now that you can kind of take out a really distracting fire hydrant or something, <laughs> right? And again, you don't want to spend too much time on that because that stuff yeah. can take a it, lot of time. That's where it starts taking time is when you start on an individual image, start doing custom like painting in, doing masks, those kinds of things. But if something just needs it a little bit, um, special images, That's this is a stage at which we'd start doing that. Specifically skin, um, sharpening on or, or whitening the eyes or the teeth or anything like that, if we're gonna do, if we're gonna do that at all. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, then we'll look at stylistic things, mm -hmm. um, adding a look. And, and we generally don't go too crazy with this, um, but really the style comes down to what's happening in your blacks for the most part, mm -hmm. um, how vintage it looks, um, the color tone, you know. And so uh, if you bring your blacks up and they're a little bit more in the on the gray side of things, that's going to make it look more vintage. Um, and one of the th one like one of my, my favorite things to do is um, to just bring in some blues into the shadows. It just kind of. It just kind of makes it feel, I don't know, just a little cleaner, a little bit vintage, not anything too drastic, but I love what it does, especially like just against skin tone, mm -hmm. bringing that mm -hmm. blue into the shadows. And then the last thing that we do um, is, uh, is denoising and sharpening. Mm -hmm. And sharpening happens on almost every photo we do, just a little bit um, in the computer, just often 
just brings that that sharpness and especially if you're shooting especially if you're shooting raw because raw is not going to add that sharpening for you like a jpeg often in the color or the image profile in your camera is is adding some sharpening so that's the last thing we do and then and then we uh then we have our final image now of course if you're going to spend your time editing photos you want photos worth editing so we've got a video to help you with that you can check it out i don't know where it's going to be right there between us right there, right there. it's right there <laughs> We'd love to see you in that video. See you there. Mm -hmm.